Board of Commissioners is called to order. Will commissioners, staff, and guests please rise for the invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, thanks for bringing us here today. Um, thanks for helping us get through the cold the last few days. Um, be with all those elected officials, both near and far, as we make decisions for the best of our constituents. Please be with those family members who are suffering loss. Um, send our condolences um, in, the, in their time of need. Bless our conversations today and be with us as we travel. In Jesus' name, amen. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. For purposes of attendance, the clerk will please call the roll. Connor? Here. Wayne? Here. Parker? Here. Gibson? Here. Smoker? Here. And Geiger? Here. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Mm -hmm. Approval of written agenda. At this time, any commissioner or member of the public may ask for an item to be removed from the consent agenda and placed under items for consideration. Will we approve? The agenda is written. Second. Moved by Parker, second by Smelker to approve the agenda. The agenda is approved. Reports from state and county officers. Seeing none, limited public comment. Morning, Mr. Schellenbarger. Morning. Ellen Schellenbarger, Hastings. I come speak to you commissioners today. Real concerns and some real issues on your, who you, one of the people who sat on your um, public defenders list. The man is a real loose cannon, Mr. Gordon Shane McNeil of his past problems, and and if he's a loose cannon, if you don't agree with somebody or something, he starts slamming people. I would be very careful if I were you commissioners to take and appoint this man to the public defenders because of his past behavior. It also goes to public perception and um, the ties that he has to different people within the community that um, he's not an outstanding man in my personal opinion. And when he slams people in the editorial, when, you are a, when you're a prosecutor, or even when you're not a prosecutor and you're in the public eye and you're a professional business person like he has been, and, um, and I would suggest that this man be removed from the list, even though there was an interview, and um, there are some ties among those attorneys that are um, are within that public defenders group um, that worked in the prosecutor's office when he was a prosecutor within the county. So there shows to me that there's some good old boy tendency within that department that this Board of Commissioners, even though you have a committee, uh, just for that, I think you guys need to have some oversight and look into these uh, alleged allegations. Thank you. Does anyone else have any public comment? Seeing none, various correspondence. Does any commissioner have any correspondence to share with the board? Seeing none, consent items. Commissioner Geiger. Madam Chair, I move for the approval of the January 8th, 2019 Board of Commissioners meeting minutes, approval of the January 15th, 2019 Committee of the Whole meeting minutes, approval to spend up to $6,600 to replace the furniture in one probation office, the probation reception office, and add one overhead storage unit to a third probation office area with funds to be paid from the capital replacement fund. 
for approval of the attached grant application that was submitted to the Michigan Department of Licensing and Regulatory Affairs Bureau of Medical Marijuana Regulation for the Barry Eaton District Health Department to conduct education, communication, and outreach regarding the Michigan Medical Marijuana Act in Barry County, and approval to award the bid for the Household Hazardous Waste Recycling Disposal Agreement to Drug and Lab Disposal Incorporated to be paid from the Solid Waste Fund. Support. Motion by Geiger supported by Gibson to approve the items listed under the consent agenda. Discussion is not allowed and a roll call vote is required. The clerk will call the roll. Jacks, oh, absent. Connor? Here, I mean, sorry. <laughs> yes. Wayne? Yes. <laughs> Parker? Here, I mean, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Gibson? Yes. Smoker? Yes. Geiger? Yes. The consent agenda, agenda is approved. Presentations? We have two. Sarah Alden. <clears throat> Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. Thank you so much for inviting me here today. Um, Happy New Year. It's nice to see you all here. Congratulations on your reelections and um, your um, um, appointment as the chair, um, Madam Chair. And I look forward to, um, to talking with you further about the training today. Um, I was invited to give an update on the um, training agreement that um, was approved by the commission last summer. Um, it was contemplated under the agreement that once the new, um, new and um, renewed appointments were made and elections had taken place, that we would provide um, some training to those people that so that so chose to take advantage of it, with the hope that um, we could get as close to 100 percent as possible, but but not mandating that. Um, I thought today I would very briefly just go over what that agenda is going to look like. Um, you should have received an invitation. The dates have been set for January 30th um, from 5 to 8 p.m. and February 8th from 9 to noon. Um, we've offered it in two um, different time frames just to accommodate folks that, you know, are working or, you know, for whatever reason a date might not fit in with their schedule. But it's an either or. It's not a, a two-part um, two session. Um, if the need arises, we'll definitely schedule another one or two. You know, we're very flexible, and that's part of the beauty of this training partnership. Um, one of the first things that I did after the agreement was approved last year um, was reach out to um, the administrative office and find out what boards were looking at um, having new or um, newly appointed or reappointed members and boards and commissions. And so um, with that list, I reached out to different department heads and met with several of them. Um, they were very um, willing to meet. They were eager to talk and um, very candid in their comments and their um, ideas. Um, the, the concept of having a training or that, you know, that for their board members um, was um, definitely not new to them. I think a lot of them are doing some bits and pieces of that. Um, some more than others, but they were um, very welcoming and open to the idea that, you know, we could help wherever that might be useful. So out of those conversations um, came a couple things um, more clearly into focus, which um, is that, yes, it is good and it will be very useful to have this more general orientation, nuts and bolts kind of training, um, but then there is a call for um, some work with those individual boards. And we look forward to making that happen as well. Under the current agreement that we have, um, not anything new that we need to, to um, proceed with, but we're looking forward to, to doing that individual work as well because that will give us an opportunity um, and them as a team really to focus on their work and goals as um, you know, their, own, their own group. Um, Michael Brown and I have met and talked um, pretty extensively about the proposed agenda. Um, we'll be meeting again tomorrow to talk more in detail about that, um, but I'll go over that with you now. Um, so with each, se each um, session being approximately three hours, um, we've broken it up kind of into, um, you know, time frames, but we want to make sure that most of all, that there's ample time for discussion and for um, questions and answers. I want to, um, before I go through any specifics, sort of remind you that um, part of this, the, the 
um, reason that this is such a nice partnership is that this training is not from, you know, a corporation that is coming with a packaged, here's what we're going to do, and this is a, a menu of things, kind of take it or leave it. Um, this is really meant to be something that is developed over time. So um, I, I think that the February 8th training might be, you know, look slightly different than the January 30th training, and that is a good thing, I think. Um, but because of that partnership and, and being local, knowing, um, knowing um, the different department heads and knowing um, some of the elected and appointed officials and that kind of thing, we have the space to um, really m mold the training to fit what is needed. So anyway, with that, um, you know, providing an opportunity, and I'll pass around this for you to take a look at. So this is our draft agenda, and um, after Michael and I meet, I anticipate that we'll probably you know, be tweaking this a little further, um, but allowing for introductions and then putting um, the attendees in sort of a, uh, the right frame of mind. So um, I use the word icebreaker. I don't really like that because it sounds like party games or something, and that's not what it is, but really um, thinking about um, why they are serving, what the um, what the their own personal goals are in serving, and then what sort of impact and legacy they want to leave in Barry County. Um, so, opening it up with kind of a leadership discussion. Um, okay, thank you. Um, then we'll proceed into some guidelines and norms, which is just a very um, important thing. Whenever you have some, you know, a training that um, for the discussion we have establish some norms for the conversation. Then going into um, the nuts and bolts, which really um, is providing some information about Barry County, um, facts and figures, um, trends, that sort of thing. Um, and this is where Michael will come in and um, again, we'll hash this out more tomorrow. We've met, we've talked about it, but we want um, to make sure we're on the same page with this. But um, talking about the county finances, um, the structure, how the county's funded. Um, one of the things that came up in discussions with the department heads is, um, you know, where, when there's a, a budget question or if more revenue is needed, you know, they can't just crank out more uh, of a product, more widgets, so to speak. And so some of those challenges and opportunities that come with the unique way that um, government is funded. But Michael will go through that. We'll talk about um, um, their role within the county government structure. Take a break for, um, for food, dinner, or, um, a breakfast break. And then we'll go into some um, training about boardsmanship and personal leadership. So we'll do um, a self-assessment. So the tool that, that we use, and under the agreement, we'll offer this in a separate session, but is real colors. Um, but that's a multi-hour um, assessment that we don't have time for within, within this time frame, but we'll use another leadership um, tool, assessment tool, and then go into talking about um, effective meetings, what that means, the role of the chair, um, some reminders of the basics with, um, of course, um, the Open Meetings Act and um, parliamentary procedure, and then establishing um, board norms and how they operate um, within their with their own boards, and again, this the the real detailed part of this will happen, um, you know, to the extent that boards want to have their own training within um, within their departments, but um, it's important to at least cover this and touch on some of this as we go through um, this training, and then we'll have a discussion about managing conflict and difficult conversations, some kind of closing reflections, what are you going to do with this information, um, what are your next steps, and a brief, very brief survey just to get some feedback so we can continue to make improvements. Um, but that's what the training will look like. We have so far, um, I haven't checked um, this morning, but I, roughly eight people signed up for each training so far. Um, and I anticipate that we'll get more, you know, in the next week or so as we close in on the first date. But um, for those that aren't able to attend, and I haven't heard that, that, you know, neither date works and could we do a third, but we will offer another one just as a, did you miss the first two? Here's another opportunity. Um, but I've had very 
positive feedback so far. People are excited and um, you know, looking forward to finding out more and what it's about and just the opportunity to have, I think, a conversation and put another tool in their toolbox, so. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions for Sarah? Is there a, a maximum on how many can go to this? No, um, so we sent out the list, um, and I, I got the list from um, the administration office of who uh, was elected or appointed. Um, the only the only cap that I would say, or the only real um, limitation is that it would be just for people that are associated with county um, county government, because um, there has there have been some questions about um, townships or village officials, and um, for a lot of reasons, it's I think in, we're just not opening it to them because that's not the framework that we're looking at. But no, I think numbers wise, we can accommodate as many that want to come. Thank you. You're welcome. I have a question. Yes. Uh, who? I didn't get an invitation. I assume you sent it by email. No, it was mailed. It was mailed. Yes. Oh, well, it might take a little longer out in the Netherlands. <laughs> so, okay. No. So I am sorry that you didn't, but I'll make sure that okay. I'll email you. One as well. Okay. Yes. When did it go out? Yeah, I was kind of oh, thinking. Oh, a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. I know why. No. So, Sharon. Well, I just wanted to mention there are a lot of board members who did not receive an invitation on our CRA board. Mm -hmm. We knew nothing about it until one of our members at the very end said, "I'm looking forward to this." And, what? and there was some concern because. Mm -hmm. So, it might be suggested to me that that's what we can do. Can we bring up the email that you sent? <laughs> So I will work, and I had forwarded the invitation as well. I'm not sure if it was distributed or how it might have been distributed um, through through the administration, but um, but we will definitely, yes, yep. So our invitation went out to all the newly elected or the ones that had been, you know, re reappointed. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's what I wondered, if it was just for them or is it for all board members? No, we would be more than happy to open it up to, to all the current members. ones as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yep. So we'll make sure that we we cover that. I, I, invitation. Do, I do agree because that was one of um, the initial recommendations was to do it so that we could reach out to our boards and people that are appointed to them. Certainly. So they can get some training. Certainly. Any other questions for Sarah? Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you so much. Our next presentation is from Mr. Reynolds. I have Rose Anger with me because she is uh, my partner in this. So I will bring this around. Whatever you'd like. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm here to give you an update uh, on the remonumentation program. Uh, the program, a uh, little bit of background, it uh, uh, is a result of uh, legislation back in 1990. Uh, what the program does is it uh, systematically uh, re uh, marks all of the section corners that were marked on the original government survey back in the 1820s and 1830s. And uh, the, original, uh, the original program uh, mandated that there be a county plan adopted. Uh, each county was required to adopt a county plan uh, that would that outlined how the county was going to uh, implement the 
the requirements of the act. And so the county plan uh, that's in force right now um, was adopted by the Board of Commissioners back in 1992. Um, the, the county plan um, is, is uh, somewhat out of date in, in that uh, it was uh, uh, designed, uh, it was written uh, for a program uh, that, uh, that was just getting started back then. There was a major uh, revision to um, Act 345 of 1990 back in 2014, and the, and the revision requires that each county update their plan, and so what we will be doing, Rose and I will be working on this together over the course of the, uh, the coming year to draft a new county plan for Barry County for the uh, for the administration, the implementation of the uh, remonumentation program. Uh, the, the maps that you have in front of you, uh, Rose uh, does a very good job of uh, detailing in a graphic manner the progress of the remonumentation program and all of those blue dots that you see are corners that have already been remonumented. And we are, I would say at this point, and uh, this is, this is pretty much a guess, but we're probably about 85% done. Uh, and so the, well, Ro Rose is saying 75%. My, my, uh, my guess is based on uh, what, uh, what I see happening with the, uh, with, with the revised plan. Now the revised act, well, let me say that first of all that the that the original Remonumentation Act mandated that every corner in the entire state uh, be remonumented. And that sounds like a great idea. Um, and in concept, it's, it's a great idea. The problem is that there are thousands upon thousands of corners within the state of Michigan that don't serve any purpose anymore. For instance, I would say, I would, I would point to uh, Isle Royale National Park. The, uh, the land where that park is, the island itself, was all surveyed by the federal government back in the 1850s. There's roughly seven or eight townships worth of, of section corners that would have been remonumented under the original uh, Remonumentation Act where those corners serve no function whatsoever. They don't control any title lines. The land is, the, the, the land is all owned by the federal government. In other words, we would be spending millions upon millions of dollars to remonument corners that don't benefit anybody in the state of Michigan at all. And so, <clears throat> uh, the, the revision to the act in 2014 changed that so that it's left to the county's option now to determine which corners are worth remonumenting and which we can simply take out of the program. And quite honestly, the, the, the new remonumentation plan probably the biggest feature of that plan is that we're going to specify which corners we're going to omit from the, the program here in Barry County. Which corners that would have been mandated by the original act will serve no function, will not improve the life of any of the citizens of Barry County. If it doesn't have a public benefit, we shouldn't be spending public dollars on it. It's that simple. And so we're going to be uh, uh, going through the, and, and Rose has 75%. There's 25% of the corners in Barry County that were mandated by the original act. We're going to be selecting the corners to omit from the program. And, and then uh, uh, that, will, that will be the biggest change in, in, the, in the, uh, uh, the county plan that will be developed. Um, I can tell you that, uh, that progress-wise, I know that when last time I was here, uh, Mr. Gibson asked me, when will this be done? And I, quite honestly, I get that, that question quite a bit. And uh, 
there really isn't a good uh, precise answer to that because uh, the progress will be determined, first of all, when, when we have a complete inventory of which corners we're, we're going to be finishing and which will be omitted, we, we will at least have a quantity of corners that we can, that we can say this is what we have yet to do. Um, the other thing that, uh, the other variable here is funding. Um, and our, our funding is, is from state grants. The grant money comes from a uh, surcharge uh, on the recording of uh, deeds, mortgages, and other documents at the Register of Deeds office. Um, there is a $4 surcharge on the recording of those documents as of now. On a quarterly basis, that, that money that's collected is deposited into a fund in Lansing, a, a special purpose fund, and then on an annual basis, that money is returned to the counties to fund the remonumentation program. Because the revenue stream is dependent on the real estate market, uh, the the funding can can vary quite quite wildly. Uh, you know, we've been through. Uh, a, uh, a recent uh, recession where the real estate activity dropped to very, a very low level and thus the, 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 the revenue stream was at a very low level for a few years there. The other thing, and, and uh, I want to make sure that I uh, get this out there, uh, the, the $4 that is uh, collected for this on each deed there's a sunset on that where, where that will re reduce to two dollars as of January 1st of 2023, if the if the law is not amended. Um, I think we will as as we get closer to that sunset time, it's going to be uh, more and more urgent to uh, to renew that to to extend that sunset date out probably another. Uh, ten years or so, and so I, I, I can, I can see that I will be coming back probably in 2020 or 2021, and asking you, asking for your political support for extending uh, the the uh, four dollars. Um, if if indeed that sunset comes and 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 the and the reduction uh, is uh, goes from you know four dollars to two dollars per per deed. That effectively cuts the the entire program statewide in half, and we would be making half as much progress on an annual basis. There's, um, uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, the the funding formula uh, favors the urban counties, and there are a lot of urban counties that have already completed their program. Uh, Kent County was the first, uh, uh, Oakland, Macomb, uh, Livingston County, uh, Ottawa County, Bay County. Those, those counties have all completed their program. Now, another thing in, in the funding uh, the, uh, for the grants. When we have completed our program, when, we've, when all of the corners have been visited the, for the first time, and uh, uh, the the initial remonumentation is done on all of the corners in our program. Uh, we will shift to a maintenance uh, mode. Now, maintenance uh, the, the maintenance is uh, it's a different funding formula for maintenance, um, and it's a reduced uh, amount. In other words, when we shift into maintenance. Our grant from the state will be reduced, and the money that we that, that that we would have gotten under the under the larger formula will then be redistributed to other counties that have not yet finished their their program. Um, there's there are so many improvements to the law from from 2014. Um, I. I, I could go into it. I could talk here for a very long time, but I won't. <laughs> um, but I'll, uh, I'll 
open it up to, to questions uh, if you have questions. Commissioner Parker. Uh, so can you, can you do this, can you go ahead and do these things if there's not enough money in the fund in the state? I mean, you have to wait until you find out whether there's money in the state fund to be able to pay you to do this? Um, the, the grants are on an annual basis, um, and, the, and the grant coincides with the calendar year. So we get a notice in, in on, on a good year in July or August, uh, you know, the, of what our grant amount will be for for the following calendar year, and then we 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 design a program based on that dollar amount. Well, you mentioned that there, so the state determines what the grant's going to be, mm -hmm. and you have to whatever that is, you have to use that grant or lose it. Yeah. Yeah, it's and and it's. Uh, uh, I can tell you that you know the grant. It's it's a grant maximum. Okay, are we required to to spend all of that money? Well, no. And, and in fact, you know, for years and years, Kent County was getting a grant based on based on the the mandated formula in the law. They were getting grant allocations far above what they could actually use, and so they were simply not spending all of their grant money and and at the end of that grant year that money would go back in to the the statewide uh, uh, fund to be redistributed well you mentioned that if things are slow there's not a, not as much money going into that fund yes but so but you're feeling that the grant money will always cover what you need to do here in Barry County then. <clears throat> Well, no. We, you know, I, quite honestly, I wish the grant was bigger because you know we, we we could we could put the if 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 our grant amount was bigger, we could put it to good productive use. Okay, okay. our our limitation is is the grant. We we do fund um, within the county. We do fund um, the process through the payment of the county surveyor salary. So all of the research that would normally be billed to the grant is actually Brian's work under his salary. So we have a grant that's upcoming year is 51,000. Our contribution of Brian's salary um, and whatever the county puts in for that actually goes pretty much right into the grant. So we're, we're kicking in for that. Other counties have to pay their uh, surveyor um, out of the grant money and that takes a big chunk if you're paying a surveyor, you know, X number of hours per month to do research. Yeah, because there's expenses involved here other than just even the salary, isn't it? Like, oh, sure. Yeah, yes. That's awesome. So you can, your limitation is that grant. It really is, mm -hmm. yes. And, and so uh, when, when the time comes to, to extend the sunset, you know, I really hope, really, really, really hope that, that they, you know, see fit to, to extend that, uh, the, that sunset by, you know, say another 10 years or so. Um, Progress-wise, um, we're getting very, very close to having in some individual townships uh, completed. I would expect that in the next two or three years, we should be able to uh, report to, to you that Thornapple, Irving, uh, Assyria, and Maple Grove townships are completely done. And thereafter, you know, we, we hope for one or two townships per year thereafter. And of course, that's uh, whether, whether that actually happens, you know, depends on the, the, the funding, the grant amount, and so on. Oh, I'll get to you, Eldon, after Commissioner. Yes. So $4 surcharge from the registering of deeds. Mm -hmm. So does every county put that into the pot in Lansing, or do we only get the money that's generated from deeds registered in Barry County? Okay. Um, all of that money goes into Lansing into the same fund. It's redistributed to the counties based on a formula that quite honestly, it favors the rural counties. The rural counties, the smaller the county in terms of population, the greater the rate of return, okay? Some counties, some small counties get three, four, five times as much money 
in, in their grants as they send to Lansing. Um, Barry County has always benefited from this. We always get more in, in our grant than what we uh, send uh, to Lansing. Okay. Uh, and you know, the, the more urban the county is, the, the less it favors the, the county. In other words, the, the, the more densely populated counties um, get considerably less than they, than they send in. The, for, the funding formula, uh, as it's defined in, in, the, in the act, every county everywhere is guaranteed to get at least 40% of what they have sent to, to Lansing. So that's one part of the funding formula. The other part of the funding formula is based on geographic size. Uh, Barry County is 16 townships. Kent County is 24 townships. So Kent County will get 50% more strictly based on, on size. Marquette County is 53 townships. And obviously Marquette County is going to get a much bigger chunk, you know, based on based on their geographic size. Now, when 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 a county completes their program and shifts into the maintenance part, what changes there is the is the forty percent. That forty percent is dropped to twenty percent, and so that part of the funding formula is cut in half. However, the part based on geographic area doesn't change at all. I estimate with 12,000 deeds recorded um, a year, a little bit less than that, that we are putting in $48,000 and we're getting back around 50, 51 this year, 56 prior year. So we're ahead of it. That's good. Thank, Thank you. Um, you said like for state and federal land, it doesn't do any good. Um, question I have is, do you have to go through when the state and the federal government sells land and different people own that land other than the state and the federal government do you have to go in there and and resurvey that and set up you know set up different districts because the state and the federal land has been sold and it's no longer owned by the state or federal government well the the uh the county plan is a dynamic document we can we can always change the the uh corners that are that are part of the program based on changing uh, circumstances like that and so if we omitted a, a corner in in our 2020 uh, county plan and then we want to put that corner back into the program we would simply amend the county plan we would bring the county plan to the county board the county board would hopefully approve that that decision and then we would send that uh, the amended uh, plan on to the state by the way the amended the amended county plan it does need to be submitted uh, by is it March 1st or April 1st of 2020 so we have a little bit over a year to to you know put this document together and and uh, get it approved I would certainly think we would have it done well before that thank you Bob. What, uh, what part does GPS uh, play in this? I was out in the woods with a uh, uh, the other day and uh, there was some trees and uh, it was, uh, I don't know where the property line is. I just have a cell phone and uh, in a couple of minutes there's a little blue dot on this cell phone where we're sitting on this log and uh, <laughs> so uh, uh, I just wonder what, uh, what part does GPS will play in this? Uh, because the health department, when we put in a new septic system or something, they've got their little handheld deal, and they uh, they come out and, and document exactly where you put your septic tank and everything. And, and so, uh, not understanding the method you use, I just wonder what the difference is between the way you locate one of these points and how you locate them in GPS. The, when the corner it, when the corner position itself is is established and monumented where we know for sure where the corner is on the face of the earth. We also get a GPS position on that corner and then that, that, that becomes part of the permanent record. Uh, the, the main document that's generated for every corner is called a land corner recordation certificate. 
that is recorded at the Register of Deeds. Um, and the, the, uh, the geographic position of that corner is right on the face of that document. In terms of a remonument process, what, what process do you go through to, to identify or relocate that point uh, other than GPS? So you, you obviously have surveying tools that you use. I don't understand how you do that. I was just really curious how you do do that. GPS is a tool, uh, just, just like all of the other survey tools, it's a particularly useful tool. Um, we get better precision, uh, better uh, uh, efficiency from using GPS. GPS has its own limitations, and one of the, one of the limitations is that in a uh, densely wooded uh, area, uh, GPS becomes virtually useless because the, the, the satellite signal is, is degraded by the trees and the leaves and, and so on. And so uh, in, in, in a, under the forest canopy, the signal that we're getting isn't a survey quality signal anymore, okay? Out, out in the open, uh, you know, out on the road, out in a farm field, anywhere where you have a wide open sky, GPS is a wonderful, useful tool. It, 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 has, it has some pretty severe limitations. If you look at the map up there, anything that's a square is a GPS coordinate. So um, the larger squares are first order, which means they're very precise, and the smaller squares are um, GPS um, within a foot. So it's good enough to get you to the corner. It doesn't tell you where the corner is exactly yet, because we're not going to park on the corner for half a day and run a lot of numbers. But the point of the GPS is to get you there. Um, and, you know, We've only collected GPS coordinates for three years now after the change in the act. So it's going to be quite a while during the revisit portion that we'll be collecting the GPS coordinates. So, yeah. Thank you. Does anybody have anything else? Thanks. Okay, thank you. Um, let's take a short recess. We're back in 10 minutes.